Hello everyone, well I'm just back from three days in a very cold, very snowy, very beautiful Finland uh, where we spent the time looking at the Nahanshi or Teki cats. So you've got the first one, often given the uh, pr uh, suffix showdown these days. Uh, that one was brought into karate by Matsumura and the Nidal and Sandan versions were made later on by Hit Itosu, who studied under uh, Matsumura as well as others. And the way I see these katas working is the fundamentals of the fighting system, the core of it if you like, are introduced by the first one. And then Itosu seems to have made the second and third one to record alternative ways of doing things or to make explicit methods that are maybe inferred or implied in the first one, but aren't directly seen. Uh, we obviously covered a lot of stuff and I haven't got footage for the entire event. Um, so these are the summary clips that I always get people to film after each chunk of information. Saves people having to scribble and take notes and stuff, right? You know, if they've got a bit of video that recaps the core things, they can then remember most of it. So if you weren't there, then you're not going to see the entirety of what we did, nor are you going to fully understand the context of everything we did. But nevertheless, I hope you'll find this footage interesting. We have a flow drill for the whole of Showdown. We have some pad drills. We've got a trapping drill for, for the first part, um, uh, the, for the trapping methods in Showdown. Uh, we have a drill for the entirety of Nidan, and we've got a, a drill for the start of Standard, and we talk about the various ways that can be integrated. We covered a lot. Uh, the students there did really, really well at getting the grips with these drills. It was a joy to watch them do them. The standard line I use is, you're making my drills very happy, which they did. Um, so I hope you enjoy this uh, look at the uh, three techie cutters, three Nahanshi cutters, some of the drills for them and, and how they integrate. So it's not complete. Uh, this is what it is, you know, in, in terms of, of footage. But nevertheless, I hope that you find it uh, very interesting. summary of the first of the uh, Nihanshi techie drills we've done. Uh, it's a core drill that goes over some of the key applications. Uh, it covers the entire kata more or less in order, although it does change sides halfway through, but when you drill it on both sides, that's correct, right? This is the simplest version of the drill. So as we talk about, most versions have that at the start. So the idea of that is if he's swinging shots in at me, I'll just cover my head and get my grip. Once he's there, I can push down on the head and escape, right? So we practice that. We also talked about if I get to there and I can't pull him forward, like pull him back away from me, then in some versions you've got the head grab, you know, where it kind of, kind of turns one way than the other. So basically push his head across so he can't fight your head from you. Then we got into the drill proper, which is, and you can do it from different grips, but this is the easiest grip to do from the start. With. So he's got a double lapel grip. I'm still going to do the same initial thing because my elbows are now above his arms, so if he wants to hit me, he's got to clear my arms, and that gives me time to react. I also I've got the forearm against his shoulders, which limits the, the, the control, uh, the, the power he can get enough for control over there. Once I'm there, I'm going to start working, so I'm just going to start striking from here. For our drill, I'm going to hit a lot with my left hand, and he's got to release with his uh, and, and block it from that side. When he does, I'm going to move to a 90 degree angle, like the cat tells me to. So I've moved to the side, and there's my first strike. Hikate is telling you where that arm is. If I couldn't quite get that far, then this is going to be a bit smothered. So then I would hit with the elbow. For our drill, we'll practice both. The third one, you've got this position here, is I'm going to grab this arm, pull it across the strike on the, the base of his neck, being that position. Once I've done that one and his head's fairly close, I can do the Gidambra. If it works, he'll fall to the ground from there. The cat kind of steps across the stamps on his head, for modern day legalities, we're probably going to change that to a, a thigh stamp, right? If he doesn't fall, we'll just go from that part. If he doesn't fall from there, then I'll, I can start following up with the punches to knock him down. If, if, if with that, if he stays upright and he gets out of it, I don't want to stay here, because I'm back on his attack line. So relative to him, wherever he's standing, I take a 90 degree line, uh, line, strike down onto his arm, and strike back into his neck. So that hit there disrupts his posture, stops him immediately following me. I put the strike in, which will obviously have an effect, and also means there's now a barrier between us. So if Timo continues to move down the angle, I've got him from there, and I can keep him in his position and carry on. Uh, as it is, what we're going to do is we're going to do a few of those. I'm going to put a few of these strikes in until he blocks it. When he blocks it, don't go under the arm because the arm will get in the way. You go over both of his hands, but under yours. The reason for that is if you blocked it high on your hand and you went over, there's no more arm to grab. If it's like that, it might work. But if it's there, it's not going to work. You go under, there's always more arm no matter where he's blocked it. And then pull it down and hit. This is the side where we've changed sides in the pattern. It, it is possible to do it this way, but it's a slightly more difficult flow for the rest of it. So to keep it simple, this is the way we'll go for now. 
When I've done that, that leg's hit forwards, whichever leg's got forwards, I do the returning wave kick towards the knee, and then I come in with my hand fist. I'm going to hit a few of these, he's got to get his arm free, which he probably will. He blocks it again. I just re-secure it in exactly the same way as I do the other return and wave kick and then strike this way with the hammer fist. To protect his head and then buries his head in the, in, against me. So he can protect it by blocking or moving. When he does that, I can't do that anymore, but I can do this, this position before I do this one. If I keep hold of this arm, if he gets sick of this and moves his head out, he naturally pulls my arm out with him. So as I start doing those hits, again, it ends up looking the same as the cat. To change sides, Timo would then double grab me from there. I would re clinch him from that position. I would start hitting again from this side. When he blocks it, I would move the other way and I start playing the other way on as I do the techniques that way, right? So, just one more time, I'll just walk it through so you get a bit of the flow of it. So, I'm there, I'm close range, I'm impacting until he blocks it from there. Again, one, two, three. Be careful with all the strike. Pull, punch, 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 he steps off by, strike the arm into the left when he blocks, pull, key, bang, 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 he blocks it again, here, 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 carries his head in, moves his head away, bang, 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 double grabs me, clinch back in again, hit with the other arm until he releases and then I'm going the other way. When we've done both sides, or I've done both sides, I would then double grab him at the end and then Timo would go left and right as well. It's a very quick way to run through some of the core applications of, of Techie Showdown and the Hancher Showdown or just a handshake, depending on what your style calls it. It's okay. Okay, so uh, this is a, a basic drill for the trapping element, or part of the trapping element of Nihanchi Kata. So essentially we're making use of that motion, this motion, that motion, and this motion. What makes it work is the way that we integrate it together. It's a reciprocal flow drill. So I feed it to Timo, Timo feeds it back into me and it, it runs back and forth. I'll just show all four movements separately and, and then we can have a little run through it. So basically the first movement in it is I'm going to parry this limb and I'm going to straight towards his neck. That's the first one. The second one is I've done that one. The third one is I've done that one. And the fourth one is I've done that one. Right, so that, that, that's the basic technique. We'll put them in a drill that allows us both to practice that trapping element. Because the essential idea is to clear the limbs, the limbs need to constantly get in the way of the drill. So there's lots of strikes in it, but none of them land. There's lots of grips in it, but none of them hold. Because we want to practice that stripping part of it. We'll get straight into it, right? Whoever starts the drill does it with the right side, right? So if Timo begins it, he's going to start striking with his right. Which will mean I'll be doing the same movement on my left. So you would drill it so many sides on one side, then we would switch and I would start with my right hand. Don't need to show me that now, but this is the idea. So Timo does the first move, I parry. When I parry it, I push it down, I come in with my own shot, which he parried. Notice how he's moving his head off to one side as he steps in. He then comes underneath his own arm there, grabs my wrist, comes in with a hammer fist. I move my head in and cover, so I'm away from the shot. I then wrap the arm, I still keep his hand here out while I do that, or he'd elbow me in the face. I then pull the arm through. When you do that, be mindful of that hand. So you see I've kept this arm tight here, so if you just throw a shot with that hand, I'm already on it. If I go there with this hand and reach round, he's going to get the shot or I'll knock my grip off. Once I've got that hand on the back of the elbow, uh, the back of the head from there, I throw my elbow. Because it is in the drill, he blocks it. And this is where we restart. So you see I'll be striking with my left. I, if that arm was tied off, I wouldn't be able to do it. You know, I'd have to do this. But for the sake of the drill, because it's a trapping drill, he just releases, I go here, he then pushes it down, I move off and come in with drill three, he blocks it, underhooks it, grabs the back, goes there, pulls through, I parry, move through, I move through to here, I throw the elbow, he blocks, I move in, he pushes through. After we've done this a certain amount of time, we'll get to the end of it, we'll stop, and then I will begin it, I'll go this way, and Timo will be coming back this way. So you drill it on the other side. Is that okay, you can do it, normally we'll do it for time. So you, rather than number of repetitions, although you could do that with your own partner as a group, you say, we'll do it for two minutes. Because the higher grades will just blast through it over and over again. The people who've just learnt it might be doing it at this kind of speed, and that's fine too, right? So they all feel two minutes worth of practice that's appropriate for their level. It's all right. So, so uh, uh, Nidan and uh, Sandan uh, drills, flow drills as well. So we'll start with the Nidan ones. So he's got a, 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 a grip here, which from the showdown, we already know ways of dealing with that, right? We've already got this stuff that we looked at yesterday. So this cat is looking at optional things you could do. Maybe not your primary things, but you could definitely do it. So one of them is I bring the knuckles into the back of the jawbone and pull it. 
That will bring him into this position, and so I'll do a knee to the groin, which will naturally bring his head forward. When I've done the knee to the groin, I hit my arms up, so if he does the head foot, he's going to hit my arms, not my head. Once I've done that, I push across. So it's a, a bigger push than what we saw in the, uh, the other cat run, right over there. I think I'm driving over, I release, I'm going to go for a low attack. He can't really stop it with this arm because I've got hold of it. But he could reach through and stop it with the other one. Wherever he grabs it, I just bring that hand there, move this arm across, which will do this. It'll rip the hand off the back of your neck, the ends here. As soon as I've got that, I'm going to take hold of the back of the head. So it's just like the, the cat breeze, sorry, that way around. One hand full of hair, one hand on the chin. I'll then pull it across and then back to my hip as I do a knee. So it's one, two, three. Right, from there, different cells do different elbows, but depending on his position, I smash it with an elbow strike. Base of the skull, side of the jaw, from far up across. Then push the arm across to keep my position from here. To stop him blocking with this arm, I'm going to underhook it and do a shot. That may cause it to correct his line. If it does, I'm going to move. I don't want to end up in front of him. I strike down at the arm, I strike into the neck from there, he blocks it, and I've got this movement here. So, um, you know, so that's a full thing. And then obviously you just do it on the other side as well. We also had a look at the start of uh, Sandan, and then I'll talk about how we can link them all together. So the, the, the way we, we put this one together, we start from the outside, bring this arm underneath, you've got to drop your weight off to one side as you do. As you do that, bend his arm and strike back, so you get that kind of whipping forward. If he manages to block this, then you've got your double block. So I didn't, because his, his energy is naturally coming this way, right, against my arm. So I just redirect, and now I've got this incidental hit here. So hitting the solar plexus on the rib cage as I do it. Right, I'm then folding in as I pull that arm down and strike across. Taking hold of the arm from there as I pull the arm in, give him a shot. Roll it up and lock it from here. Step across, put the knee strike in, push down on the head to keep him down, lift, whack. Been the, the end of it, been the full thing. Uh, then you can then, you can, I mean, which we haven't done yet, but I'll show you now so you've got the footage. You can then put all of that together. So if you start from a double lapel grab, I get my hip, I start swinging my shot up from here, which he blocks, I'll show you from this side. I move the side, back slap, elbow, strike, that's all the stuff we did yesterday. Neck crank punch, he steps off line, I step over here, I strike, he blocks it, I pull down, I kick a hip, he blocks it, I kick a hip, he puts his head in, boom, 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 he moves away from there, bang, bang, bang. He then comes in, and if you want to go into number two, he does this grip. I then immediately go to here, knee, push him across, strike low, rip across, Take the head from there, bang, push, underhook, step across, bang, knee, push, neck, which he blocks, and then from there, I went from here. If you wanted to go into the sand down from here, which we'll do after coffee, he then brings his arm back this way. As he pushes the arm back from there, yeah, see where I end up? As soon as he does that, I go, right, we'll go there. He blocks this one, I probably it through from there, I've got this hit, I pull, I hit, I lock through, put my knee in, bang, 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 that'll do. Right, so you've got a little kind of drill there where you've got a lot of all three of them in one continuous flow drill. An uber drill, if you could call it that. Eh? So, okay. Um, so, some pad drills there, put on a hand. So, the, the base line in the first two movements is we're doing the back slap and the elbow, right? But, but because of the way I would need to hold the pad if I held on his arm, it's either going to be too close to his head or the limb's going to be too short. So, for compromising it, we're just going to put the arms, just going to put them up from there, so double, double strike. Which way around he's got these pads depends on which drill that we're going to do. This is the right way around for the first one, right? He's got the, this one in front. Uh, slight angle on the first one, I'll still pretend I'm taking hold of the arm as I put that back slap in. I'll then turn from there and do the elbow, just like the cat does. Now, if we imagine him blocking with the back hand while I do uh, uh, yeah, that one there, so I'll be pulling and hitting like we did yesterday. So on the pads from there, when I've done the back slap and the elbow, I'll pull that down with the start and then come across with that shot. I'm then going to put the arm bar on, remembering it's a real arm, so I'm not full force. He starts to come up, I'm going to guide the arm across like we did yesterday, get the grab, and for the sake of finishing off, we'll go one knee, two knees. So that was our first one, which we'll just do again, right? So again, back slap, elbow, pull down, cross, put the arm bar on from there, guide it back through, one knee, two knees. Right, so that was the first one. Second one, do with the partner, just so we can see. Uh, I've done the back slap of the elbow, and he's blocking with this arm. Now, we did have, you know, the stuff we looked at yesterday of changing sides, but one option is you can move to the third part of the cap, this part. Before I then do the Gidamba eye, the punch which hits him, knocks him down the ground, step across, 
kind of stumps towards the head, modern day, probably better stump towards the legs, right? So I'm going to put that on the punch from there again, he's going to move up, it's the same initial start. I've got that one, it just takes the back pad away as I surf it through. Real head, so don't hit that hard, pull it round, hold the pad there, just turn around so I can, can see the distance. There we go. See how it's level with his head, but it's well in front of it. So not that, and not that. That one is going to get hurt, that one you tend to get hit by the arm as it comes in. So if the pad's there, you can hit it fairly hard, no problem. He then drops. If you want to finish with your hands, you can. If you want to roll and finish from there, do some kind of kick towards them and then move away. That was our second one. Third one's a little bit more complicated, but not a lot more. So uh, I'll just do it on, on you if that's all right. So uh, uh, the same initial start, but he blocks with his arm again. When he blocks it, I can circle around and go here. I've got this strike. If he blocks with the other hand, I've got here. And one option I've got is I can step away and go there. So it's just a series of movements out the cat kind of strung anyway as a combination. Uh, on the pads, as I say, the punch is holding to the hard part of this. But so you've got the same, same punch the same way around, you've got that one and then that two. Is then going to get that pad ready for the uppercut as I'm moving this arm across. I do the uppercut here. He then turns it, I've got the hammer fist, which can be the hit and the block on the pad. Bam! I'll then guide that one through and get the pad up the other way. Bam! Turn around that way, put it here, again, well away from the head so there's no accidents. Bang. And that was our final one of those. So we had those three now handshake pod drills as well. The one I did solo, you want to go on that, yeah, is a similar idea, right? So you've got the, and, and it, it, there's loads you can do, but this it gives you, you know, you can play with them along. So you've got the elbow, and then we've got the hit on the back of the neck. Then we've got the neck crank, and we would be doing the punch with this hand when you've got the pad on it. But if it's there, I could do the same any downward strike. So, the, to give you an idea of some of the solo stuff you can do, you can start from here, you've got your head grinds and stuff as well. But you do the elbow, the forearm strike, the neck crank, some suitable downward finish. Right, so you can practice that part of the pattern on your own. You know, with a bit of creativity, you can do that in lots of them, but you can change more. Okay.